No ki te honore, uh, ki te mei, ki te minata, uh, minata hinari tina koe e te rangatira. Uh, he, he teka ki te mei, ki te mana uenua o tēnei roe, uh, he teka ki te mei, uh, ki te kuea uh, o te motu a uh, whae mole, uh, nga te rārua, uh, rangatāni ki wairau, te atiawa, nga te tama, nga te kuea, Nā te koata, nā te apa ki te rā tōa, nā te tama, rangat, oh, nā te apa ki te rā tōa, hei, koutou katoa, uh, tēnā rā koutou katoa. It is a precious moment in time to have in one room the people who inspire you every day by their leadership and their legacy. The people who encourage you to be more by their example, their selfless sacrifice and their relentless enthusiasm. And those people who have made you, your life so magical by the blessing of their life. The painter Pablo Picasso once said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. It sums up to me the exhilaration, the example, the excitement of a Wano-centred life. As I look around all of us this morning, I see a room overflowing with people who have gifted their service to Wano in multiple ways. My job this morning is to share some of those stories with you. Tu taki taki na waka, tu taki taki na tangata. This symposium is inspired by the notion of a meeting place in time and geography where waka and wano come together. You bring with you your stories, your memories, your passion about what sets your soul on fire. Our speakers yesterday set the wheels of imagination spinning. They told us to take nothing for granted, to live up to our purpose, to be all that we can be. They asked us to reflect in this historic setting on our own histories, to confront intergenerational trauma with intergenerational resistance and a resilience born of the courage of those before us. They reminded us to press pause, to care for ourselves. We cried, we laughed, we danced, we sang, most of all, we shared story. The wairo has a special place in my story. As a child of the 70s, I was raised here in the days of endless summer. We swam in the emerald rivers of the Polaris, not knowing we were in the natural kainga that formed at the junction of the Rai and Tahoiri, Titiraukara. Or the stories of the kaitiaki, kai kai awaru. <coughs> These were momentous days in the Māori Renaissance. In September 1972, Nā Tamatoa presented a petition with over 30,000 signatures to have Te Reo Māori taught at school. Yet the only context I can ever remember in the, those days of hearing Te Reo Rangatira was by virtue of being a patu paiārahi in the brownie pack. <laughs> the basis of a new treaty justice was being formed in this era. While I was feeling virtuous from walking the 18-mile hikoi from Picton to Blenheim, Dame Finna Cooper led 5,000 people from Tahapua and Northland to Parliament to protest the loss and the alienation of Māori land. In 1975, identity came to the fore. For me, that identity was about self-image wanting desperately to fit in, to look like everybody else, responding to the taunts of four eyes by writing my first story, the day I won a beauty contest. I'm pictured here with my best friend, Jane Gruby. We did everything together, we biked to school, we had sleepovers, we shared our hopes and dreams. 
Yet not once in those childhood days did I know of that proud wakapapa to kāti hurirapa ki pukitāriki, to kāti mamoi, to being Māori. Her father Alex was immersed in Māori health in the early days of Mātāwaka, all to which I was oblivious to. The writer Mark Twain once said that the two most important days in your life that are the day that you were born and the day that you find out why. For me, in my childhood in the beautiful Wairo, I was ignorant of the very stories that formed the tapestry of this land. I was ill-equipped to call myself Tangata Tiriti, those who come to this nation through virtue of Te Tiriti or Waitangi. That sense of unknowing has been a powerful driver in my own search, my own journey for meaning, my passion to contribute to a stronger future for all of our mukopuna to inherit. And so, I come to our story, Te Puta Itanga o Te Waipaunamu. Much of what we've heard over the last three years has shared the what, the core business of commissioning, the investment pipeline, the challenges for our navigators in working with Wano, our collective mahi in the areas of family violence, of suicide prevention, of mokopuna ora. But our greatest learning in all that time is that people don't come to Wano ora as a business or a service. They come because they believe in the approach. It's all about the why. They come because ordinary is not in their nature. They want to discard the tyranny of the average for something altogether more spectacular in line with their own uniqueness. They come because they believe in their right and their responsibility, their obligation and their honour to create a better platform for tomorrow. In doing so, all of you have become game changers you have stepped up beyond the comfort zone and you have shown us that a revolution can begin with one. Sometimes your purpose has come from tragedy, the loss of a loved one. Other times, as for Janice Lee of Koha Kai, it comes from a burning sense of social justice that people with disabilities not only have the right to employment and to independent income, but also to live well. Wānau Ora in Te Waiponamu has been motivated by the heart work of aspiration, the opportunity of advancing well-being. And as Minister Hinari articulated this morning, as the Prime Minister embarks on a journey to a child well-being strategy, it is timely for a greater examination of well-being by the name that we all know best, Wano Ora. Everything you need to know about well-being you will find written in the seven po. Outcomes that reflect a bolder attitude, family standing in their own truth. As the minister said, it is not about sector, sector, sector silo thinking in Pornaki or separate votes. It is about Tuanui defined by our wānau. The first po is that wānau will be self-managing and empowered leaders. We saw the impact of this at Omakapā. Kylie shared the amazing story of Te Pā Wānanga, an innovative kaupapa Māori learning village that will be the incubator of the next generation of leadership. In a low-income community in Dunedin, the wānau of the Kostafin hub have grown kai, set up a playgroup, distributed cooking kits, constructed a tunnel house. And in our NAV nation, we see a band of champions dedicated to working with Wano to bring out their uniqueness, their complexity, and their desire to be in charge of their own destiny. Paurua, to lead healthy lifestyles has had a profound impact into Waiponamu. He Waka Kotuia demonstrated that incredible power of transformation in their workshop yesterday. They epitomised their tribal challenge, he kaha uia te kaha, to foster a sense of community and wānau pride. 
At the end of last year, a group of over 20 health and well-being exponents took part in the Aoraki Summit, challenging themselves physically and mentally to the will of Ta Matia and Ranginui. There is nothing that tests your mettle quite as much as a 15 kilometre walk in 30 degree heat or an unforgettable 30 kilometre paddle down the Pukaki. A dozen years ago, Professor Mason Jury published Measures of Māori Wellbeing, which are synonymous with Wano Ora. Those measures included to promote manaakitanga, pupuri taonga, or guardianship, wakamana, empowerment, wakatakoto tikanga, our future generations, wakapumo tikanga, wakawanaungatanga. One initiative that models these broad capacities and actions is Koha, Kia ora Hands Aotearoa. This approach includes rungoa, mirimiri, in a context of te reo and tikanga. Wānanga Tāo at Koko Rarata is about the world's finest blight-free, virus-free potatoes. <laughs> While also growing a marakai, engaging their wānau in horticultural qualifications, creating a wānau at home, bringing their people home. Hail compound conditioning, the one in the middle isn't in hail compound conditioning, <laughs> <laughs> represents the flourishing vitality of Kori and Manu Hail and our mia, devoting their lives to encourage wellness amongst the generations through their mobile gym and lifestyle programme. Po Toro, Toru, champions the opportunity to enable all wano to taste life to the utmost. Our angels trio, Love Chi, set up a text to lunch strategy to support wano whose children were going hungry. But they did much more. They showed us all that every child is worth our love, our collective responsibility to do right by them. He Wakapiki Mori sets itself the challenge of enabling Wano with disabilities every opportunity to live their best life, to dance with reckless abandon on the dance floor, to make every moment count. Bros for Change started from that same dream that James and the Downs Wano shared with us in seven words, to want a better life for them. Nurturing a hunger to reach out, to live without fear, to live well. And later today, you can learn more about Te Araraukura, a partnership between Ngai Tuahurere and the Seven Kura in the Eastern Cluster of Christchurch to increase connections to wano, to culture, to language, to identity, to leadership. The fourth po is around participating in te ao Māori, whether via te atārangi, as being celebrated here in Te through the creation of real pepe, children's books that have had phenomenal success, or at the other end of the spectrum, ties that bind us, the poems and short stories reflecting wano experiences in Muruhiku. At the night market, we meet up with Waka Wenua, the Puha sisters, who were driven by the complete lack of cultural competency that characterised their own birthing experiences to want more, to create ipu wenua, sacred vessels to protect and hold the wenua until it is returned home. Paurima is around wealth creation and futures making. A key factor in success, as our board chair Trevor talked about, has been setting out a pathway to sustainability. Whether it is through the hot aunties, Manaki products, and Kākano Cafe, Jade Timapara in the middle with her effervescent, effervescent energy, soon to show on Māori television. During the year, we've been delighted to release the results of analysis by economist Professor Paul Dalziel that revealed for every dollar spent in one of our Wano Water initiatives, he took a key to mahi, there would be seven dollars in return. Sustainability is also a key focus, of, uh, key focus of our wano coaches, our contract advisors, and something we're very keen for government to understand the wider value. The sixth po is one that has been of particular relevance to our wano in the wake of the Kaikoura earthquakes, flooding, fires, 
cyclones, tornadoes. And it is in that setting that a Wano-centred approach unites with our navigators to help consolidate resilience, to walk tupuna lands, to be supported, to be our best self, to address the savage realities of violence to others and to oneself through reliance on Wano. And finally, we end with a focus on treasuring the land and the sea, on setting up collective food kitchens and marakai, on protecting and preserving taonga for all of our mukapuna to cherish. A reminder of Henako Aroha, the loving heart that brought Manaki Tanga to the core in the aftermath of disaster. We are all storytellers. The stories that I've shared today are but an entree into the feast of stories that connect people with purpose. Stories teach us about ourselves, our legends, our legacies, our insights and plain common sense. They disrupt deficit thinking. They confront racism at all levels and inequalities built from difference. Our stories make the invisible centre stage. They bring the priorities of the marginalised and the dispossessed to the surface. They demonstrate how we serve others, how we practise our values, mō te ara, kia ora ai te wānau. Every time we share stories, we have an opportunity to share a memory of value to us. It was fabulous last night to dance to the wonder of the Aotearoa All Stars. And it provoked in my mind one final story. Recently, one of our beautiful queer, who was an absolute stalwart to Fire Tariana, worshipped the ground that Fire Tariana walked on, as many of us do, Myra Winera from Takapuahia reflected on her experiences as one of the all-time Māori female pop groups of the 60s, the Chevelles. The Chevelles performed at the Hollywood Bowl, they toured concerts in Salt Lake City, San Francisco and Honolulu. They could have been huge, but as staunch Latter-day Saints, they refused to sing on Sunday a factor which eventually limited the Māori Supreme's ability to take on the world. Their difference defined them. Rather than inspiring respect for a life led by faith, their principles became a barrier to opportunity. But wait, half a century later, that flame of talent has passed on to another generation with the story of their mokopuna, your mokopuna, Kiala Seto. The real life of Kiala Seto and her struggles to fit in as someone with Māori, American, Pacifica and European heritage inspired the hit song, This Is Me, which recently won the Golden Globe for Best Original Song in a Motion Picture. The theme of the song, as inspired by this mighty mokopuna, is all about embracing your differences, standing up to the world to carve your own path, to not let the attitudes and the constraints of others constrain you in any way, to make no apologies, this is me, this is us, wānau ora. Her own story, her life experience, became the source of hope for not just the movie in which she starred, but indeed for audiences across the globe. Tu Takitaki Nā Waka, Tu Takitaki Nā Tangata is inspired by the call to be fearless, to be audacious in the articulation of our dreams, to imagine a future in which the well-being of our wānau is guaranteed through the efforts we make today. 
Just as Huriawa of the Waikorupupu Springs watches over all of her children across the many tributaries that form the network of waterways across Aotearoa, you here are all guardians of the special places, of the special seeds of life which enable us to plan for our future. And if there is one undeniable fact about the beauty that bubbles under the surface all around us, it is that it requires us all to preserve and protect, to be vigilant in maintaining the Māori, in nurturing the life force. That is perhaps the greatest story yet to be told. How do we make Wano order grow every day? How do we address our own unknowing? To reflect and keep check on our behaviours which are not mana enhancing? How do we watch our attitudes, our ways of being? What can each of us do to unleash the remarkable potential of Wano, to draw upon the richness of Wakapapa, to reframe the narratives, to demonstrate aroha in action, to hold firm, to hold fast, to all that makes us unique. Ultimately, that is the convergence we most desire, a collaboration of hearts and minds that will enable every Wano to be a sphere of influence a site of safety and a flourishing sanctuary of self-determination. Kia ora.